Pressure, Part 2. So it's important to understand pressure because there's many situations where uh, the net force that is moving something is the result of a pressure difference. So here's a simple example. We have a wind blowing on a sail and because of the uh, airflow around the sail, we happen to build up high pressure on one side of the sail and low pressure on the other side of the sail. So the amount of force uh, per area on one side is more than on the other side. That pressure difference means that we have a net force and that is what moves the sailing ship. Uh, basically the same thing happens if we uh, think about air resistance. So we have an object uh, moving through air. Uh, the motion builds up a uh, high pressure on one side and in the wake uh, low pressure develops. It's that difference of pressure that results in the uh, air resistance force. Another example is uh, buoyancy, the buoyant force that uh, floats objects or that causes objects that uh, are low density to be pushed up to the surface of the water, say. Uh, that's due to pressure differences. So we know that the deeper we go in a, in a fluid, the higher the pressure due to the weight of the fluid above. So uh, it's natural that we have these pressure differences and these pressure differences result in uh, net force. Uh, yet one more example, uh, which we'll look at uh, in more detail in another tutorial, is aerodynamic lift. So the, in this case, the uh, airflow uh, around a wing uh, is different on the top of the wing compared to the bottom of the wing. This results in uh, pressure difference. As I said, we'll look more carefully at that in, an, uh, in another tutorial, what that how that pressure difference resu uh, results from. But uh, given that there's a pressure difference, we have a net force and that's the aerodynamic lift. Now um, we could ask what, uh, how does pressure change? Well, one of the ways that pressure changes in a gas is if we compress a gas, the pressure is going to increase and uh, conversely, if the uh, gas expands, then the pressure uh, decreases. This is known as uh, Boyle's Law. Let's uh, look at an example of that. Uh, so here you see a pressure gauge and I'm compressing by uh, pressing in the syringe. And so now the uh, gas in the tank there is under higher pressure and if I go back and reduce uh, the volume back to where we started, the pressure goes back to where we started. Uh, here's a, another example. Uh, we take uh, some of these peeps which are like marshmallows. They have um, lots of air pockets in, um, in them and we're going to place one into a uh, vacuum chamber. So. Now we're going to release the vacuum. Let the air. We just let the air back in. So. Uh, before the vacuum pump is turned on, uh, the peep is surrounded by uh, air at normal atmospheric pressure. After turning on the vacuum uh, pump, the uh, chamber uh, goes to very low pressure. Uh, the peep is uh, filled with air pockets and so now the pressure is decreased and so uh, the air in those pockets uh, expands and so the peep uh, grows uh, very large. 
uh, in that process, some of those uh, air pockets uh, start to burst so that uh, when we uh, turn off the vacuum pump and let the uh, air return to normal atmospheric pressure, now the peep is uh, collapsed because many of the air pockets uh, burst. Uh, this um, was used as a sort of a plot device in the uh, conclusion of total recall where the, because the pressure on Mars is very low when the uh, characters are exposed uh, to the Martian atmosphere without spacesuits, uh, they uh, swell up like the uh, peeps. I'm not sure this is totally biologically accurate, but uh, it was uh, convincing enough to make the movie successful. So. Now, a uh, more practical uh, example of uh, Boyle's Law is uh, breathing. So in order to uh, draw air into our lungs, uh, we increase the volume that lowers the pressure and then there's a pressure difference, uh, lower pressure inside of our lungs and so uh, air is drawn in uh, and then the reverse happens when we uh, compress the lungs then that increases the pressure that higher pressure inside the lungs uh, causes air to uh, move out when we exhale. A uh, similar thing happens uh, when you drink through a straw. So you use your lungs to reduce the pressure inside the straw. Um, outside the uh, pressure is normal atmospheric pressure. So now we have a pressure difference. That pressure difference uh, pushes down on the liquid outside the straw and uh, draws uh, liquid uh, up the straw. Uh, let's look at a related um, example of um, using pressure difference in uh, like this in uh, killing. Quite right, my dear. So, so I've thought this one this? through very carefully. It's off to bunny heaven for you, big ears. So in this, no! this case, the uh, rabbit. What the? A rabbit is drawn in the hole. It's uh, moving. At this point, the rabbit has been... Sucker, eh, Gromit? The bun back 6,000! So the rabbit's been pulled into this um, vacuum cleaner. I don't understand! Of course, that, uh, that seems absurd, but uh, interestingly enough, uh, it's actually not only possible, but is used to capture uh, prairie dogs. So. Let's look at a quick video of that. So here we see Here they are, the prairie dogs. They uh, live in burrows somewhat similar to uh, rabbits. So. so here you see. Uh, there you see the prairie dogs being thrown into the uh, bed of the inside the truck. Then they uh, take the prairie dogs, uh, dust them for fleas, put them in a trailer and move them to another location. Since uh, wherever they were captured, it's you're not allowed to kill them, so but you are allowed to move them. So, uh, just getting back to 
uh, understanding of what's going on here. Uh, as with any vacuum cleaner, uh, this uh, uh, prairie dog vacuum, or the one in um, Wallace and Gromit, uh, produces low pressure on uh, the uh, one side, and then it is the presence of atmospheric pressure on the other side of the prairie dog that produces a net force and it draws uh, the prairie dog, uh, pushes the prairie dog uh, into the, uh, the truck where it's captured. So in, uh, in summary, pressure differences lead to a net force such as air resistance, buoyancy, and aerodynamic lift. Boyle's law says that uh, pressure in a gas increases as the volume is compressed, and conversely, pressure in a gas uh, decreases as the volume expands. Pressure differences can be created by volume changes. A uh, simple example is when we, when we breathe. And uh, finally, the net force that draws air and objects like the uh, rabbits and the prairie dogs into a vacuum is produced by the pressure difference between the vacuum and ambient atmospheric pressure. So the important point I want you to think is that uh, it's not the vacuum which is by itself producing some kind of sucking force. <clears throat> the, um, the motion depends on the difference of pressure, so we have to have um, a higher pressure on the other side of the um, of the vacuum so that the pressure difference results in that net force. Anyway, that's uh, the basics about um, pressure. We'll uh, be using that in a number of other uh, examples, uh, especially when we get to effects animation. So, see you then.